So three secrets to trading are document, document, and document. Now, before we get to that, this comes from Trading Full Circle. And I talked about a presentation that Tom McClellan did a few years back at the American Association of Professional Technical Analysts meeting. And he was talking about when you buy a stock, you form a relationship between you and the company. But you're also forming a relationship with anyone who bought that stock prior to you. And to quote Tom, he says, and those people will screw you. Now, I think if you look at what's happening in the market and when we look at some of these shorts, and as I said in tonight's service, talking about, I think it was TNDM, you've got a lot of overhead supply, a potential overhead supply. So there's a lot of people that are probably probably be looking to bail out of the market. Let me get my tongue on stuff. I had emailed Tom years ago and told him about that. And he says, well, I got one better for my late mother, Marion. And I've seen and heard this one a thousand times since. Everyone uses timing in their investing. Some people buy when they have money and sell when they need money, while others use methods that are more sophisticated. Now, last week we talked a lot about the pre-mortem. And in the end, I'm going to remind you to go back in and rewatch that presentation. And this week I thought I would really kind of get into the pre-mortem or expound upon it a little bit, but I wanted to touch upon the, the documentation of the trade and a little bit of the pre-mortem going into the trade. Now, thinking about what Tom's mom said, are you buying because you have money? If I'm having a really good trading day, like on the intraday stuff, for instance, I will push the limit a little bit and maybe take an extra setup that I might not have normally taken because I have money. Or are you selling because you need money? Well, a lot of times we do that. And a lot of times, especially if it's the what happened recently to you, let's say you lost money. For instance, I had a really bad day last Friday. Well, Monday, I was a little skittish, especially with all the volatility and all. And it was really hard for me to hold on to these profits because I just wanted to make some money back as quick as I could. I think Monday, Monday was the best day, day of the week so far. Well, I guess we only have one day left. <laughs> but I was a little skittish and thinking about selling on some of these positions because I didn't want to give up the open profits. And of course, it can always be something far more sophisticated. So ask yourself those three things first. Now, a little confession time, and this is why I put this in this week. Are you being goaded? Or more accurately, allow yourself to be goaded, goaded because nobody can make you do anything you don't want to do. Now, as I said before, I'm probably one of the last persons in the United States to get around to watching Game of Thrones. But a lot of people told me that I should watch it. and It was entertaining, and it, it was. And my daughter, my adult daughter, uh, visits a couple nights a week because our house is in between her work and her house. And she spends a couple nights a week here. I think she's, I think she likes the free food. <laughs> anyway, we rewatch. We tend to rewatch Game of Thrones with her because she's a, a nerd when it comes to this. Anyway, Iris Stark, I think, would be a good trader. Because one of her lines throughout the movie is, that's not me. And more importantly, or as importantly, you should know who you are. And more importantly, I think is what I'm trying to say, you should know who you aren't. So in trading, you if there's a certain thing, but it doesn't fit your psyche, even though it works, maybe you shouldn't do it because that's not you. And the trade I got goaded into yesterday was in a small way, and I took it for two reasons. One, because I had money. I had a good day yesterday, and I was feeling flush. And a, a client who is pretty good at doing these things texted me and said, hey, Tesla's got earnings. And I'm thinking to myself, that's not me. I don't want to get into 
after hours trading. One, because I can't use the orders I would normally use. I can't use a trailing stop. I can't use a stop entry. I can't use a protective stop. And what happens is I have to sit there and babysit it. And it's also a really crazy squirrely way to trade. But I took the trade anyway because I had money, right? I was feeling flush. I was feeling smart. And I said, was, I said to myself, well, this is just be a little cherry on the cake. And if it doesn't work out, I'm going to sweep it under the rug. Well, it didn't work out. And it didn't get hurt too bad. But I lost money because I allowed myself to be goaded into a trade. And that's a little bit of the FOMO and other things like that. By the way, right before we went live, I'm thinking, the secret to trading really is just dealing with these issues of trading psychology and wrapping your head around them. And the best way to do it is just to document what you are doing. Now, as far as trading is concerned, your emotional status is very very important are you tired are you hungry and it's interesting that there's been studies done if you start reading about this behavioral science behavioral finance and stuff like that there's been studies done where they look at the sentencing of crimes and if you are convicted of a crime see if you can postpone your sentencing until after lunch because <laughs> it's been shown that judges are much more lenient after lunch than before lunch. Well, that's because they are hungry. And there's been a lot of studies done on this, and I saw one of them recently, and it was pretty fascinating that if you get sentenced before lunch, your chances of getting a much harsh, harsher or sentence are greatly increased. Now, this one doesn't seem like it would be a negative thing, but are you in a fantastic mood? And I've been bouncing off the walls and coming here and feeling great about everything. And then my reaction to what I should do in the markets is probably a little too free and easy, and the market humbles me, and that puts me back not, not to a normal state, but actually below a normal state. Now, on the flip side, are you pissed off? Are you gun shy or a little skittish? On Monday, I was a little skittish coming in after a really bad Friday and thinking about it all weekend. And also, the volatility of the market has gone nuts lately. And by the way, one thing that you have to wrap your head around is increasing your stops to accommodate the crazy volatility of the market. And if you're trying to only risk a little bit of, of money, I can guarantee you, you're gonna get knocked out. And right now, it seems like S&P futures, if you don't give them at least 30 points, you're gonna get stopped out. And even on 30 points, you're gonna get stopped out pretty quickly. And that's a lot, believe me, in futures. Now, are you angry with your spouse, your significant other, or, or both? And as I say, if you have both, then, you might not want to be trading. I hope I don't lose too many clients by saying that. <laughs> Document your F-bombs. And I did have an F-bomb or two today. I, I was thinking around noon, I was going to brag to you guys and girls and say, hey, you know what? I didn't have one F-bomb today. On my best days, I have zero F-bombs. And when things aren't going well, I have a plethora of them. And it's very important to, to pay attention and be really cognizant of what you're doing. So I document it. I write it down, okay? If I have an F-bomb, I write it down. Put F, you know, on my trading journal. Where's my little F-bomb? My desk is back to being a mess again. I need to get somebody to visit soon so I can clear that. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I, should, I should put a little stamp on the bottom of it with a little F and just stamp it on my, <laughs> in my trading journal. Now, one thing that's really helped me lately, it just amazes me is how these little, simple, stupid things can help you so much. And it's like, oh man, I thought he's gonna tell me the Holy Grail tonight. But 
the reality is in the real world, little things like this can really help. Now, one of my rules, it's not a hard and fast rule, but it's something that I try to adhere to is, especially in the intraday stuff, if I'm entering a position intraday and it's going up and it's breaking out, it's doing what I want it to do, I'm very tempted to just jump in at the market. But I try to resist the temptation unless I really should already be in the market. But I try to resist the temptation of jumping in at the market. I put in a stop order above the market. And if I get triggered in, I get triggered in. If I don't, I don't. And to my amazement, I have missed a ton of losing trades by doing that. And I started writing whew, in my trading journal, and I was surprised at how many times I have written that recently. And I'd be willing to bet if I'd have jumped in on every one of those trades instead of using a stop order, I'd be willing to bet I would be losing money this week and every other week since I started that.